In the summer of 2006, almost three years after starting my PhD, I was ready to quit. I had nowhere near enough results, the equipment I was using didn't work most of the time, and I could barely summon the motivation to get up in the morning. But cut to just over a year later, and I'd managed to turn things around and get the data for a few publications. I'd managed to write my entire PhD thesis from scratch in just three months, and I managed to pass my PhD defense with zero corrections. And on top of all of that, and perhaps most importantly, I'd actually started to enjoy the process. So in this video, I'll go through the key things that I did differently to most other PhD students. So let's start with what I did before I started to write. The first key element was reducing my general level of stress. And I did this in two main ways. First, I started taking walks around the campus whenever I faced a difficult problem in my research or whenever I found myself getting too stressed. And this gave me the time to think about what I needed to do and get myself into the right frame of mind to come back and deal with the problem. Previously, what I would have done is I would have just found myself killing time on the internet just to get through to the end of the day. And this had the effect of numbing my stress, but without actually getting rid of it. So the stress just built up in the background. The other main thing I did to reduce my stress was that I basically stopped worrying about the end result. So I decided that I didn't care if I passed or failed, but I was going to give it my best shot and just trust that I would be able to cope with whatever happened. I also decided to slow down and put much more care into my experiments, which meant that I started to get much better results. And I talk in a bit more detail about these changes in habits that I think saved my PhD in this video up here, which I will also link to in the description below. Now, although my productivity increased once I slowed down and started dealing with my stress and started putting more care into the experiments, I was still doing experimental work well into my fourth year. So I had a final submission date at the end of my fourth year, but my research was still a bit chaotic. It wasn't focused on finishing. So my supervisor then told me that I would no longer be allowed into the lab after the end of March 2007, and that I would have to write just whatever I had. And because of the limited time, I had to make some tough decisions. Anything that I did, I would either have to finish or just let go. There would inevitably be some loose ends, but that was okay as long as I tied up others. So I had to decide not to do certain things and focus with energy and determination and care on other things. Still though, the thesis would be a little bit thin, so I took on a side project, which was based on another student's research, which we thought could produce some results quite quickly. But that side project produced a really interesting surprise result and publication, which I'll also link to below. And this result, there was definitely a bit of luck involved, but it wasn't just luck. I'd also built up the skills that I needed to take advantage of that surprise result and ultimately turn it into a paper. So by the time I stopped doing experiments, I knew that I had enough for a PhD. Not the best PhD ever, not world changing, but with two publications and enough data for at least one more, I felt that it was good enough. And because I wasn't allowed back in the lab, I just had to focus on writing. The hard part was behind me. The results weren't going to change. So it was just a matter of making sure that I was productive when I was writing. Now, some people try to write while they're still doing the research, but it's much easier to write when you know that the raw material isn't going to change. So if you're in a position where you have research or analysis still to do, 
I would say prioritize the raw material of the research and the analysis over writing. If you feel that you do need to start writing, then focus on the parts of your thesis that you know are not going to change in response to the results. So for example, sections on basic theory or techniques that don't change. But definitely don't write chapters on the assumption that you know what the findings will be if you haven't done the analysis yet, because that tends not to go very well. Okay, so before I started writing, I decided to work at home, not at the office, because there were fewer distractions. And I set up a dedicated space just for thesis writing. So I had two large desks joined together in an L shape. So I had plenty of space and I got myself a very comfortable chair. And I put this next to a large window so that I would have plenty of natural light. I also got rid of my TV and I had no internet connection on my computer. And the lack of internet meant that I had to gather all the papers that I would need beforehand, which forced me to think about what I would need for a particular section or chapter in advance. But it also meant that there were no distractions. So if I was sitting at my computer, the only thing that I could do was work. And nowadays, I use software to block distracting websites while I'm writing, but the principle is basically the same, making sure that there are no online distractions. So I set myself a target of three months and with six chapters that gave me about two weeks per chapter and that would give me about three months in reserve before the final absolute deadline. So I had a bit of a safety net. And I set myself a daily minimum target of 500 words, which I knew that I could meet even on my least productive days. Now, if I smashed the target and wrote 2,000, 3,000 words in a day, then it felt amazing. But on the more difficult days, when I struggled to meet 500 words, I'd still feel good if I managed to fight through and hit that basic minimum target. So this meant that I finished every single day feeling good about my progress, even on the difficult days, which in turn, meant that I started the next day feeling confident. But then to keep track of my progress and reinforce that confidence, I drew a grid where each block on the grid represented 500 words, and I stuck that grid on the wall. And then every time I finished 500 words, I would color in one of those blocks. And that simple act gave me a nice little dopamine hit and helped me to maintain my motivation. So if you try this, try to set your target as something that you know that you can achieve daily. For me, it was 500 words. Yours might be more or less than that. But set your target as something you know you can beat uh, rather than something that's as high as you can possibly imagine. So you want to be meeting your targets on the vast majority of days. Okay, so in terms of my routine, I figured the two most important parts of the day would be the beginning and the end of the day. So I decided it was important to always try to achieve something early and build some momentum and then to have a routine for ending the day as well. So I would always try to stop while I still had some energy in reserve. So then I would have more energy to keep momentum going the next day. And when I stopped, I always tried to give myself something easy to do to start the next day, which might be something like putting in a caption, putting in a reference, just something to get that easy win first thing so that I woke up and then arrived at my computer knowing what I was going to do first. I also made sure that I tidied my desk at the end of every day, which also helped to kind of close the day mentally and stopped my brain from going over and over the thesis at night. So it was a nice little ritual that I had. Then as I was writing, instead of worrying about what I thought the examiners wanted to see, I only wrote about what I felt I knew about, and I never cited anything that I hadn't read and understood. And I focused only on the very best, most relevant literature, taking the stance that any given paper had to be good enough to get into my thesis. This made it easier to write, 
And it also had the added benefit of associating my work with the very best in the field. And as I was doing this, I took the view that I was choosing the syllabus for my own thesis defense. So I decided to only include what I could comfortably defend. And then it came down to the care I put into the writing. So just like I put care into my experiments, I took a great deal of care over the clarity of my writing. So many people say that you should just get words down and sort the details out later, arguing that to do otherwise leads to perfectionism. But what they're really talking about is indecision stemming from a lack of confidence. But just throwing words at a page doesn't solve the problem, it only delays it. So it gives you the impression that you're being productive while not actually producing anything that's useful, which ultimately causes many more problems later. So I think of writing as solving problems of expression. So trying to find ways to adequately communicate the thoughts that I have in my head. There are always multiple possible solutions to the problem, both in terms of the expression of the individual idea and how it links to the words already on the page. Now, some of these problems are more difficult to solve than others, but whenever I hit a block in my writing, I would just slow down and give myself some time to figure it out instead of putting pressure on myself to always be getting words down, getting words down, getting words down. So if you want to know more about my approach to writing, check out this video where I go into it in much more detail. Then as I was writing my thesis, I tried to finish each section to a submittable standard before moving on to the next. And this meant making all of the key decisions about what I wanted to say and what I wanted to leave out, as well as adding all the references and figures and tables and doing all of the formatting. Now the temptation might be to say that a section is more or less done and then move on, but it's easy to underestimate how many small details need to be taken care of. But for me, finishing sections to a submittable standard meant that I could relax about the sections I'd done instead of having all those unfinished sections still at the back of my mind. And by sticking to these principles and being consistent I was able to finish each chapter in about two weeks on average. And although I had to do some minor revisions in response to my supervisor's feedback, the first draft was pretty close to the final draft. And so that's how I wrote my PhD thesis in just three months. So as always, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and share it because it helps others to find this video and it helps me to build this channel. And if you have any questions at all, please do leave a comment below. And finally, if you'd like to know about new videos, head over to my website at phd.academy and sign up for email notifications so I can let you know when I publish new videos. So that's all from me. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.